is a crazy world. Let's see. Oh, that's fine. That is fine. Good morning, good morning. Let me just grab some blocks. I'll close that front door. Hmm. I have two batteries. Anybody need some batteries? Do you need batteries? <laughs> I have two batteries. I don't need those in my, in my pocket. Hi friends, it's 9 a.m. It is uh, time for yoga and it looks like we're good. Everybody's hanging in there. Um, just a short, quick moment uh, because the world has changed, I feel like, since Friday. Um, we talked a little bit about the whole George Floyd thing on Friday and, uh, <clears throat> and then again Saturday. And it's obviously... A lot of the protests, I just want to be clear about something. There's a lot of protests that are peaceful protests. <clears throat> the bummer is, in fact, most are peaceful. The bummer is what you're not seeing, you're not seeing that part, the majority of that part in the news. What you're seeing is, you know, the explosions and the bombs and the fires and the, and, you know, and the beating and... and and all that sort of stuff, and that's incredibly uh, sad, and it's a shame that that's how people decide they need to um, protest a horrific event, right? But I think it's important to, to make sure that people understand that most of the world is good. Right, <clears throat> the what you know, the whole saying, "If it bleeds, it leads." In the news, is you know the news channels and stations. Their whole job is to get you and me <laughs> to click and to watch. And I just want to make sure that when all this is done, that our our faith in humanity <laughs> still exists. Like, I believe in the good and the, and, uh, of, of humans, right? I think, that, I think that ultimately people are good. And, you know, I, um, we're not, there's a whole big discussion that we could get into about what happened and why it happened and the years of oppression and the fact that there was a pandemic and everybody was locked down and then all of a sudden they were like, ah, just, you know, come out like raging animals. But I think ultimately it's a very small piece of the population. And I think that that's the important thing to, at least for me, that I want to share is that inherently most people are good people. And I think the way that we can spread some of that good around is by continuing to take care of ourselves, continuing to take care of the people that we love and the people that are nearby us and hopefully that ripple effect you know will will, will continue I know it doesn't seem like that right now but um, but it it will <laughs> it will and we have to we have to believe it will right otherwise we throw up our hands and and uh, and give up and that's not what I'm about to do <laughs> that's for sure so today uh, I thought we would focus on some of the fundamentals of yoga. One fundamental pose, which is half moon pose. Half moon pose is this pose here. So there's a lot of different things that happen. And I have my blocks. If you have your block handy nearby, then, then great. And if not, it doesn't matter. You, you'll, you'll be fine without it. But um, so when we get into there, and we'll do our warm-ups in, in a moment. But, but w one thing I just want to just want to uh, share with you about the pose is warrior three is here notice my hips right warrior three we come forward hips are square to the ground back foot pointed down then this hip opens that movement right so if you can see that movement that's ultimately what needs to happen in half moon from here whammo right 
and and that is a big so that's a big uh, trajectory is that the right word <laughs> but that's what we want to focus on uh, today just kind of a basic half moon pose go ahead and start by bringing your feet about shoulder distance if it gets too noisy outside I'll shut the door but right now I got the door open here and our lovely yoga studio five point yoga where we share peace and love and well-being <laughs> bring the palms together close your eyes let the shoulders drop down let the top of the head float up breath nice and smooth that working good set your intention maybe your intention to release some stress to heal to strengthen to uh, manifest to let go of something whatever it is for you and then drop your head down to one side nice easy neck stretch breathe this is week 12. <laughs> week 12 friends we are going to hit 70 and 71 and 72 this week good switch sides same thing stretch the neck find the breath good smooth even breaths good dropping the arms from there make a few circles ahead one direction remember if you're newer to us just joining us these are done on a donation basis so after class not now if you have the financial means please uh, feel free to donate take your class pay for your class that would be fantastic opposite direction you could do that by going to fivepointyoga.com and either sign up for your class or give us a little $15 suggested donation could or you could Venmo me directly that'd be fine too at Teddy McDonald all that goes to the business to help keep our doors open when we can open our doors back to the center some shoulder rolls forward and back forward and back and of course thank you for those of you who have continued to support us during uh, during the pandemic it's the pandemic good opposite direction but I try to not really talk about stress or you know too many stressful things or shutdowns and unemployment and pandemic and riots and all that crazy stuff that's going on in the world uh, during yoga I just want this for to be an opportunity for us to kind of check out and get into our body and our breathing so see you at the end of class interlace the fingertips turn the palms up to the ceiling stretch the shoulders here breathe back to half moon pose one cool thing about half moon pose is it is it um, is it uh, it touches the hamstrings intensely and the hips and then it can also kind of open up the body a bit it stretches the neck as well fold to one side easy stretch side stretch here breathe Good switch sides, same thing, other side. Good. Back to the center, lean back, take a nice big inhale, and then fold down forward as you exhale. And hang forward here, breathe. Hanging forward, a few breaths. Again, feet or shoulder distance or mat distance. My mat seems a little bit crooked. I'm gonna straighten it. I like it to be straight. <laughs> but hang forward and breathe. So part of the, the pose we're going for today, working on, is hamstring flexibility. So bend the knees here to start. Grab your elbows, drop your head down. Breathe deep, good smooth, even breaths in and out of your nose. And then clasp the hands back behind you, interlace the fingertips, stretch the shoulders, a few breaths. Ah. 
Good, one more breath, give it a good stretch. And then release the arms, engage the abdomen. Let's roll back up slowly. We'll take a few shoulder circles, arm circles. Open up the shoulders a little bit. You know, I will say that one thing that I know for sure is movement is key. All right, switch sides. It's really important to move through the stress. Good. Now side to side a little bit. Nine and ten. Good. Sun salutations. Next. Feet together. Palms together. Nice big inhale. Lift the arms up. Folding all the way down, forward, exhale. Extend your spine as you inhale, look forward. Step back to plank, top of a push up. Hold it here, breathe. Abdomen strong, breath smooth. First few breaths, solid foundation here. Let's do a few circles. Circles with the shoulders and the wrists. This is harder for some, so just be aware of your shoulders and your wrists. Good. Opposite direction. Very good. Back to the center. Um, five times. Chaturanga. Lower halfway. Press back up. Plank. Lower halfway. Push back up. Plank. Lower halfway. Press back up, plank, lower halfway, push back up, plank, what is that, three, four, two more, lower, press up, one more, lower, press up, that might have been six. All the way to the mat, easy back bend, gentle back bend, draw the shoulders down the spine, lift the upper body up, oh. give it a little stretch here, and breathe. Stretch the neck too, so back of the neck is longer. Turn your head to your right side, nice easy neck stretch. Then switch sides, other side. Good, and back to the center. One more inhale, lift up a little bit taller. And then child's pose for a moment. Child's pose, a few breaths. Good, and then palms flat. Tuck the toes, lift the hips. Bend the left leg, push the right heel down, downward facing dog, stretching one side, breathing. Good, switch sides, same thing. Very nice, straighten both legs from there, come up on the toes, walk softly to the hands. When you get there, extend the spine, look forward, inhale, fold down, exhale, and stretch. When you fold down, Grab your ankles and kind of give them a little extra pull. Or grab the back of your knees and give them a little extra pull. So you can stretch and then come all the way up. Hands together at the heart. It's fine when you go up and down to go up and down with your knees slightly bent. But when you do get into that forward bend, um, Uttanasana, that's what it's called. Give yourself a little extra hamstring stretch. Arms up when you're ready. Inhale and back stretch fold down exhale extend the spine as you inhale look forward step back as you exhale first one step lower down you could lower all the way to the mat nice and easy upward facing dog gentle back bend and then downward facing dog 
Pause, fingers spread, palms flat, breath smooth. Up on the toes again, walk or hop forward. Extend the spine as you inhale, fold as you exhale. All the way up, nice big inhale. Hands to the heart, exhale, arms up again, inhale, lift, exhale, fold down. Now we do a little bit more challenging, halfway up, then step or jump. Chaturanga, upward facing dog, easy, maybe chaturanga again. Downward facing dog, hold it here, breathe. Fingers spread, palms flat, breath smooth. And here you can get a hamstring stretch. So lift that tailbone, extend the shoulders up, breathe deeply. And then up on the toes again. Walk or lightly hop forward. Halfway up as you inhale. Fold as you exhale. All the way up as you inhale. Hands together at the heart. Exhale. One more cycle like that. Arms up again. Inhale. Reach up. Exhale. Fold down. Extend the spine as you inhale. Step back or jump back. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Shoulders back. Maybe the extra chaturanga. And then back to down dog. Fingers spread. Palms flat. Breath smooth. This time, take the right leg up behind you. And today, we're gonna open this hip and bend the knee. You get a little side stretch here as you open that hip and bend the knee. That's also gonna be, you know, how well you know you're gonna be able to open up the hips in half moon. So if that hip opens, great. If not, great, you just work on it. Get that hip open. That's more of a side stretch if your arms are straight. Take one more breath. Then square the hips, knee to the nose, abdomen strong. Lift it back and up. Forward knee to your left side, twist. Back and up. Forward up to your right side. Back and up. And then all the way forward to the hands. You could grab your blocks if you want them, if you had them. Straighten the front leg, flex the foot. Bend the knee, drop the hips down. It's definitely hamstring stretching, inhale. Hamstring stretch, exhale, hip flexor stretch. Inhale, hamstrings, exhale, hip flexor. A couple more like that, inhale, exhale. Make it a good stretch, inhale, exhale. It's one more. Inhale, exhale, good. Back foot turns flat, warrior one. Come on up, warrior one. Shoulders relaxed, breath smooth. Good, then from here, clasp the hands back, interlace the fingertips, lift the upper body up, draw the shoulders back and down, drop the head back, take one big inhale, fold down as you exhale. So drop the head down inside the knee head inside the shoulder and breathe what did i say head inside the shoulder <laughs> not so sure you can do that one more breath give it a good stretch and then come on back up warrior one inhale hands down take the leg back vinyasa lower down upward facing dog downward facing dog Good, left side when you're ready, take the leg up behind you. Right away today, open up the hip, bend the knee. Get that side stretch. Breathe. Good, one more breath. Stretch. And then square the hips. Knee to the nose, abdomen strong. Lift it, back and up. 
forward knee across to your right side, twist, and lift it back and up, forward up to your left side, back and up, all the way forward to the hands, pause there, straighten the front leg, flex the foot, bend the knee, drop the hips down, keep it going, inhale, exhale, inhale, Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, a few more times, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, good, one more, inhale, and exhale, good, turn the back foot. Come on up, warrior one. Arms up, shoulders relaxed, breath smooth, hips turn forward, breathing deeply. And then clasp the hands back behind you, interlace the fingertips, lift the heart up, draw the shoulders back, drop the head back, breathe. One more inhale, and then fold down as you exhale. Fold down and stretch, breathe. Strong back leg, sinking a little bit lower. One more breath. And then come on back up, warrior one, inhale. Hands down to the floor, exhale, take the leg back, vinyasa, lower, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. I think I'm gonna close this, it's just so you can hear. <laughs> Maybe that will be a little better. I know it will be better for the Instagrammers, but. <laughs> Good, all right, so downward facing dog, couple breaths, and then up on the toes again, walk or lightly hop forward, extend the spine as you inhale, fold as you exhale, chair pose, bend the knees, reach the arms, inhale, holding chair, a few breaths, 30 seconds. Sinking a little bit lower. A few more breaths. Good, one more big, big inhale, sink, and then stand, hands together at the heart, exhale. Good, big full breath. Now linking it together, we're gonna to do three rounds, sun salutation B. Chair pose when you're ready. Inhale, chair, fall down, exhale. Halfway up, inhale, step or jump back, exhale, chaturanga, upward facing dog, maybe chaturanga again, down dog, right leg first, take it up, bring it forward, warrior one, reach up, inhale, hands down, take the leg back, vinyasa, lower down, upward facing dog, down dog, left side, take it up, bring it forward. Warrior one, reach. Hands down, leg back, vinyasa, lower. Reach up, and back, and breathe. So each time you get into a pose, you wanna kind of extend and sort of maximize. So once you get into down dog, fingers spread, palms flat, Extend the shoulders up, lift the tailbone, really feel it. And then press the thighs back and the heels down. Every day is different. Every day you're gonna feel a little bit tighter, a little bit looser, you know, congested, open, energetic, lethargic. Right, up on the toes again, walk or hop. So much to do with halfway up, look forward, fold down, a little extra pull. Chair pose, inhale. 
stand hands together exhale you know and but how you feel on any given day is going to be based on a myriad of different factors from you know diet to sleep to news to personal situations relationships finance like all kinds of different things are going to affect how you feel and it's just important to honor that two more rounds chair pose inhale fold as you exhale halfway up inhale and then step or jump back exhale chaturanga upward facing dog maybe chaturanga again down dog right leg first take it up bring it forward warrior one reach hands down leg back vinyasa lower upward facing dog down dog left side take it up bring it forward warrior one reach hands down take the leg back vinyasa lower upward facing dog shoulders back chaturanga down dog hold it here and breathe same thing reconnect with the pose with your breath fingers spread palms flat extend up press the thighs back heels down breathe Great, up on the toes again, walk or hop forward. Halfway up as you inhale, fold as you exhale. Chair pose, inhale, stand, hands together at the heart, exhale, very nice. Big breath. One more round like that, back to chair, inhale. This is all the warm up, getting the body ready. Halfway up, inhale, step or hop back as you exhale, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, maybe. Chaturanga again, down dog, right side. Take the leg up, bring it forward. Warrior one, reach up. Hands down, leg back. Vinyasa, lower. Upward facing dog, down dog, left side. Take it up, bring it forward. Inhale, warrior one, stretch. Hands down. Leg back, vinyasa, lower. Shoulders back here, that's a big move, right? That move, get the shoulders back, heart up, and then chaturanga, downward facing dog. Drop to the knees this time right away. And this is a little exercise that is exactly what we need to be doing in uh, half moon, or similar, just a little easier. I'm going to open up that knee to the outside. So take your right knee, open it up to the side. All right. Can you straighten the leg out? Straighten the leg out. Breathe. Straighten the arms. Lift the leg. Then bring it back and down. Other side. So left knee comes up on the outside. I think I heard this called fire hydrant pose. You can guess why. <laughs> and then drop it down same thing I know you can't see it but then straighten that leg out breathe ultimately in half moon you know you're creating this this angle this upward angle a couple breaths straighten the arms so as I we're gonna do one more one more time on each side as I lift, as I straighten my arms, my leg drops down. So let's all do it again and just take note. So first, I'm trying to keep the arms straight, let's take the leg back first, back. Then flex the foot. Now open it up to the side. See, immediately my arm bends. <laughs> I want to straighten that arm. And then take this leg. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so there's almost a cramp. If I can keep the arm straight, Take the leg out to the side. Lift it up. Oh, my goodness. Do the best you can. Out to the side and lift. Very good. Switch it. Same thing. Left leg back. Hold. Flex the foot first. Now open the hip 
and then keep the <laughs> both arms straight. And it's like it's like I open the hip and this arm bends. <laughs> what is going on here? Stay straight there, guy. <laughs> open the hip <laughs> and then get that leg out there. Breathe. Oh. So notice I'm like six inches from the floor. You want to really lift it up if you can. Okay, back. We're going to do two more over again. So you just kind of lift it and then bring it over. How high can you get from the floor? One more breath and then back. Lift it and one more time, like starting to drip sweat here. <laughs> <laughs> lift it core strength arms straight lift the leg and then bring it back hi yeah yeah child's pose take a couple breaths so that's hard <laughs> for me anyway downward facing dog seriously I'm sweating now down dog bend the left leg push the right heel down stretch breathe so there's a couple ways to sort of get into our half moon. Switch sides, switch legs. And we're gonna do two, two different ways. All right. First way is basically triangle to half moon. So right leg up, bring it all the way forward. And you know what? I'm gonna start on my left. So you guys can stick with your right leg just so you can see it. Um, arms up, open up. Just so you can see the first one here this way from the camera angle. But so your right leg is forward. You're gonna be in warrior two to start. Warrior two, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here in warrior two because I wanna focus on this hip opening. Warrior two, slide engage in the belly, open up the hips, open up the hips. And that, you don't wanna sacrifice the front knee. Front foot, front knee, front thigh, all in a straight line. Sink down and then this hip pulls open this way so the hips open but don't move this knee keep this all in place now you can take the back arm around the back toward the front thigh bring the forearm to the thigh same thing here tuck the tailbone engage your abdomen slightly tuck the tailbone and turn and twist up and breathe Good. Now, all you're gonna do from here, straighten the front leg. Straighten the front leg, step the back foot an inch closer. You're gonna release that top arm up, so it's your left arm. Reach it up and then sink into your triangle pose. Breathe. So one thing we mentioned earlier was that twist. Here's where you wanna really open up that whole upper body and turn and twist and breathe. One more breath. Good, now you're gonna look down, bend the standing leg, inch a little bit more forward, and step up. Whoa, you might crash. So the general rule here with the block, the use of the block, is essentially if your standing leg is, is bent to the point that you, you, when your hand is down here, you have to bend it, you cannot straighten it. That's when you need a block. Right, that's when you use a block to extend the length of your arm so that you can get a nice straight leg. Right, that's the idea. And your hips were already, stay in half moon, but your hips were already sort of open. So when you came up, they were open a little bit. Now what you wanna do is get that, that section here. So right here on this hip, you wanna engage the abdomen slightly. It's a little tuck in the tailbone. And it's a little thrust. And that thrust is gonna help stack this hip on top and then if you can, drive that back leg, then take the arm up, and if your balance is okay, you're gonna look up at that top thumb. Whoa, my balance is not okay. <laughs> I'm a little off balance. Couple more breaths. Lifting the back leg, stacking the hips, engage the abdomen, breathe deep. And then hands down, feet down, shake out that left leg. Okay. We'll just give it a little squat down. So squat down for a moment. So there's a lot of hip action going on. 
a lot of side, you know, bringing the leg out to the side is kind of in that hip socket, opening the hips in half moon in the hip socket. So, but ultimately hips get tighter and tighter and tighter. One of the first things that happens, or one of the most common things that happens to elderly people is hip replacements. Why? Because they're not moving as much. And when they fall, they break their hip right away. So we want to have strong, supple hips. Go ahead now, set the hands, lean forward into Bakasana Kuro. Mm, few breaths. And jump back or step back. Chaturanga, upward facing dog, down dog. Good, right leg right away. Take the leg up, bring it forward, turn the back foot. Where you want, I'm sorry, this is my right leg now, but should be your opposite leg. So if you started on the right, I switched just for the camera. So now you're probably on your left leg. Uh, so warrior two, warrior two, same thing. Think about the hips. Think about engaging the abdomen slightly, drawing the pelvis underneath you so that you feel the stretch in the inner thighs. Arms up, shoulders relaxed, gazing forward, breathing deeply. Sinking down a little bit. Now, back arm wraps around and grab your front or just bring the forearm to the thigh. Lean back, turn and twist up. Strong back leg as you turn and twist. Good, now from here, those of you that want to challenge your balance a lot, keep looking up. Inch the back foot a little. Oh, we did triangle first, sorry, don't do that yet. Triangle pose, right hand down, oh, your left hand down to the shin, and then right arm up, all right? But here, twist up and breathe. Good. If you want to challenge your balance a lot, this is where you look up. Bend the front knee, find the floor, inch the back foot a little closer, and then step up into your half moon pose. And again, grab the block. If you cannot, straighten your standing leg. If you can, and it straightens easily. This hand, you know, I was always taught initially that it should be in line with the foot. But because of balance, you know, I always bring it about six inches, maybe even more, out to the side. You don't want to go too far. That makes it easier. So you want to be right on the edge of where you're balancing mostly on the foot. All right, fingertips are just there for some balance. And breathe. Lift that top leg. Stack the hips. Engage the abdomen. Tuck the tailbone. Crash once in a while if you can, if you need to. <laughs> a few more breaths. Open the hip. And then slowly, hands down, feet down, right back into your squat. Shake out the leg and squat down. Here, I'm just going to show you a little bit of something. So you stay in the squat, but oftentimes when I watch super flexible people come in, let's say ex-ballerinas or whatever, they have so much mobility in that hip. It's incredible. And when you do this here in half moon, notice my toes. My toes right now are pointing to the side wall, right? If you can externally rotate that leg a little bit more, so all you would have to do is that, right? That's it. So that's the idea in half moon. We're gonna go there again, but you externally rotate that, that leg a little bit. All right, back to um, Bakasana again, crow pose. Set the hands, and you don't have to do crow. Crow is just a fun little added spice if you want. Any variation you want. I'm gonna kick into your headstand. Whoa, headstand version. That's fine, All right? Or just the pose itself. And then step or shoot the legs back. Chaturanga, upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. And breathe. Good. So now I'm going to go back to my right leg 
this time, right leg up, bring it forward. Uh, you know what, sorry, scratch that. I wanna step back again because I wanna do what is called wild thing. I wanna flip the downward facing dog because it's actually really good for your hips. So right leg, go ahead and take it up this time. Open the hip like we did before. And then slowly, if you can, you'll bend the left leg, but then reach around and then push the hips up. So you here you're getting obviously a big shoulder strengthener, a shoulder stretch, a spinal stretch, but you're also getting a little hip stretch. If you can push the hips up and breathe deeply. One more breath. And then slowly come on back around, hands down, swoop the leg forward. This time, stay on your back toes. Stay on your back toes. We're gonna do one of my favorite sequences. <laughs> We're gonna go warrior three and then half moon and even reverse half moon we'll do today. So go ahead and take the arms up, uh, arms out to the side, lift the upper body up, breathe deep, drop the head back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Balance is a little sketchy. Now lean forward, step up. Warrior three, balance. So if your leg is tight, the hamstrings, then you're just balancing with the leg slightly bent. It's totally fine. If you can, drive the leg straight just for a couple moments. Arms forward. And then arms out to the side. Slowly lift, open the hips, open that hip. Right hand down to the block or not, but again, we're, what we're gonna do now is close the hip and open it five times. So this top hip, close it down. Now that's a warrior three pose. Now open it up. Oh, yeah, that's one. <laughs> close and open. This could get a little annoying after a while. Close it and open. That's three, two more. Close, I haven't done this in a while. Open, <laughs> it feels like it. One more time, close and open. And now stay open and drive the back leg back and externally rotate that, rotate that leg and look up at the top thumb and breathe. One more breath, open. And then hands down, shake out that leg. Give it a little shake. We're gonna skip the reverse half moon just for timing purposes. Go ahead and now squat down again. This time slightly different squat. As you come down, we're gonna do a little hip stretch. So you come down, lean in between the legs, push the hips out a little bit. Left arm out to the side, right arm up. Breathe. Good, one more inhale, open. And back to the center, good, switch it. Opposite side, reaching up. Good, one more breath, twist. Good, back to the center, crow pose again. Set the hands, lean forward. Balance on the arms, breathe, and jump back. Chaturanga, upward facing dog, and then downward facing dog. Good, left side, same sequence. Take the leg up and open the hip, bend the knee. That should feel good, should feel good because now you have more flexibility on the right side. So now we're gonna Create it on the left. Flip your downward facing dog. Push the hips up. Breathe deep. Good. And then slowly come on back around. Swoop the leg forward. Stay on the back toes. Come up. Crescent pose. Crescent pose. 
shoulders relaxed, arms out to the side, lift the heart, lean back, breathe deeply. Adjust your visor. <laughs> One more big inhale. And then lean forward. Whoa, balancing. Come up, warrior three first. A few breaths here. Arms out to the side, drive the leg back, reach the arms forward, a few breaths. Good. Arms out to the side from here, here's your half moon. Open up the hip. So whenever I do this in class, notice my upper body comes way up. I always tell people, think about this from your hips. It's not just from warrior three, you're bringing the hand down, taking the arm up. See, my hips are still square. It's not the pose. That is the pose, right? So you gotta get those hips open. And we're gonna do our five times because we did it on the other side. So from warrior, uh, half moon pose, Ardha Chandrasana, those of you learning Sanskrit. Go ahead now, close the hips down and then open the hips up. A little easier for me on a block with this side. That was one. Close the hips down, whoa, crash if you need to, and then open the hips up. Three more like that. Close the hips down, good, open the hips up. So the thing is, you might think, oh, this is so hard on the right, but you're also creating more flexibility on the left, which you saw, close down, open up. Two more, close, open. Last one. Close and open. Right arm up. Hold, breathe. A few more breaths. Lift the back leg. Externally rotate that leg so the toes point up. Two more breaths. Shake out the leg. Oh, it's hard. All right, some of these basic poses, when you spend, squat down again, when you spend just a little extra time on them and you dial them in a little bit more, it just helps with everything else, right? Helps with all of the different arm balances and the different standing poses. You start to think a little differently because you're giving your body uh, another step on the path to uh, more awareness, right? More, more knowledge, more intuition, more connection. Go ahead now, set the hands one more time. Crow pose again, last one. Uh, fingertips, why not? Sure, it's Monday. Lean forward, balance. Chaturanga, upward facing dog. <clears throat> Downward facing dog. Pause there, take a moment. Bend your right leg, push the left heel down. And then switch sides. Good, and then we're gonna come down and go right to frog. We're just gonna spend about 90 minutes, 90 minutes, <laughs> 90 seconds maybe two minutes in frog pose. So you can turn to the side. The idea is to get the knees as wide as you possibly can and then bring the hips back. So once you get the knees wide, feet apart, I'll set the timer now. You're gonna push the hips back. So just a little yin pose for us for the moment. Excuse me. Breathing deeply. Gently pushing back. It's people. What are people doing? Huh? I don't really see people too much these days. Just kidding. Remember, gently, gently pushing back. Gently pushing back into the hips. This, what you're stretching now by pushing the hips back is the groin, right? And you're like, oh yeah, it's gonna, there's a little wishbone split there. And um, the 
interesting thing is it's as you push back a little bit you can kind of open a little bit the groin is you know obviously the inner thighs but also it is um, the adductors the adductors are the kind of groin muscles essentially the inner thigh muscles and they're super tight <laughs> they're super tight so just keep sitting back we've got about 30 seconds to go jaw relaxed face relaxed fingers relaxed a few more breaths Now give it a little push, last few breaths, a little extra push. We're going to pigeon after this. Good. And then come on out of there. Forward is the easiest way out. Forward. Oh, yes. And then, ooh, straighten one leg at a time. And then you're going to make your way back to child's pose. Slowly back to child's pose. Here. Oh, yes. <laughs> From child's pose to um, pigeon. So downward facing dog. Step your right leg forward, pigeon pose. Good. And we'll spend, let me just check what time it is. Yes. Spend just about a minute, minute and a half here, pigeon. Good. Ah. All right, you guys. Thank you very much. We're just winding down now. So that is your Ardha Chandrasana little workshop there. And uh, th remember, thinking about those hips and opening up those hips is going to allow you to have a better warrior two, for instance. And lots of other poses. The standing yogi toe lock, which we didn't even do today, where you take the arm out to the side. That's another one that this thing helps. So all of these poses are interlinked because we're all connected. I mean, the feet affects your neck. If the feet are too tight, you, you might not feel it right away, but I'm guaranteeing you, or your back affects your hips, your hips affect your back. And so it's just important to just do the whole entire sequence and, and get the body more and more open. So um, I appreciate you guys showing up. Thank you very much. Last couple breaths on this side. And remember, donate if you can. That would be helpful. Thank you very much. And uh, if not, make sure you support your local businesses and, uh, and, and spread the peace, friends. It's time to spread some peace and love. Switch legs. We need it. We need it. That's for sure. Um, I think I mentioned this the other day, but you know, when I got my USA triathlon coaching certification, I, you have to go through what's called safe sport. Safe sport is a, uh, a program that teaches you about, um, power imbalance and how, uh, a coach, let's just say a young team and there's a 19 year old coach and a an 18 year old athlete, well, I guess not 18, but let's say he's an 18 year old coach, 17 year old athlete. And if there's um, uh, non consensual, consens it doesn't matter, even if it is consensual sex, it's a crime because the coach is not allowed to sleep with the athlete. I mean, it's a gray area, obviously, but as a coach, as someone in power, it's just not something you do, right? Which is horrific for me when I think about all these crazy yoga teachers that just take advantage of their students. I mean, I just wanna, you know, smash their heads in. But that's not the right thing to do either, is it? <laughs> but anyway, the point is, they teach you as a coach how you have to respect these boundaries. And you know, part of what's going on in the world is this power imbalance and people taking advantage of that. And it's such a shame. And uh, I, think, I think we need to just kind of spread more equality and peace and joy and love. And, you know, no one's different than anyone else. It doesn't matter. Go ahead and come on up. 
doesn't matter whether you have a badge or a gun or a uniform or a lot of money or fame. It, does, it just doesn't matter. And, and you know, hopefully someday, you know, we'll get, we'll get to a place where most people believe that. Um, I think most people do, I should be clear. Most people do arms up, fold forward. I guess maybe we just have to, we just have to, uh, you know, resign ourselves to the fact that there will always be people who don't believe that. Sadly, go ahead and lean forward and stretch a few breaths here. <sighs> Excuse me, tomorrow, I hope to see you back here tomorrow. I'll be right back here, 9 a.m. I think I'll be in my backyard. We'll be streaming with the Malibu Half Marathon crew. So. Um, we will have a little bit more run focus. It'll be Yoga for Runners part four or part five. I, don't, I forget, actually. I gotta, I gotta even look. But um, that'll be fun. You can, it doesn't matter if you're a runner or not or a cyclist or hiker. Everybody will be able to get some benefit out of it. But we'll just have a little bit more focus on running because we'll stream with the, the Malibu Half Marathon crew. All right, let's either stay here if you want, that's fine, or roll up, roll back, take the legs up and over your head for plow. Couple breaths. From plow to shoulder stand, if you can. And let's spend a little time here, a few breaths. Legs out to the side, stretch. Good, bend the knees, soles of the feet together. And then legs back up and then down over the head slowly and come on down we'll take our final twist pull the right knee into the chest give it a good squeeze in roll to your left side easy twist a few breaths Good. Switching sides, same thing. Pull the opposite leg in, roll over, twist. Good. Back to the center, Shavasana, final rest. So feet flop open, arms out to the side, shoulders down, breath smooth, take a few breaths.
Go ahead and bring your left hand to your heart center, right hand to your belly. Pause for a moment and take a few breaths. And then bend the knees, roll to your right side. Just take your time. And then up to a seat, comfortable seated position. Sit up nice and tall. Uh, get the body as comfortable and relaxed as you can. Palms up, eyes closed, take a few breaths. So again, one main idea in the yoga practice is to get to this place, right? To get to a place where you can just sit and be calm and be comfortable in your own skin regardless of what's happening not only outside in the world but also in between your own ears sometimes that's more powerful than what's happening outside and oftentimes in fact so it's important to understand that part of you and your being and if you don't like the thoughts that run through your mind then it's okay to shift them to start to guide them in a different direction First, awareness. Okay, bring the palms together at the heart. Just take a moment of gratitude. Gratitude for every breath. Namaste. Namaste, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me, joining us on this lovely Monday morning. Stay safe, stay healthy, uh, and, uh, and let's spread the good word of peace, love, and kindness. All right, you guys, I'll see you right back here uh, tomorrow. Hope you have a great day.